Um, I don't mean to be rude, and don't answer me if you don't want, but uh, do you like uh, men or women? Uh, actually, <laughs> I love the other men. How do you have hard sex massage if you don't like men? Because this is my job. Oh, it's just because of the job. You've, do you have good powers of concentration? Because this is my money. And right. also, I don't find uh, any job else. Mm. With 75% of my masseur's clients wanting sex massage, whether soft or hard, maybe Burton's satatic zone isn't as mad as it sounds. Like the locals, Burton used to wash and gossip in the hammams here. What's your name? Rupert. Rupert. And you? Mando. Mando. Sitting amongst the glistening naked bodies of other men in this hot, exotic environment, it's easy to see how he might have got carried away. The male figure is notably superior to that of the female. The latter is a system of curved, soft and rounded lines, graceful but meaningless and monotonous. The former far excels it in variety of form and in sinew. There will be a score of fine male figures to one female. But Burton wasn't just hanging around admiring the scenery. He was memorizing every detail every gesture. He was preparing for his most perilous adventure yet. He was ready to risk his life, to go on the Hajj, the pilgrimage to Mecca. I've come here to look for traces of the Egypt that Richard Burton experienced in 1853. Things have changed even since my last trip here 15 years ago, when every soldier seemed to be offering sexual favors Gay behavior has been driven underground. Egypt is getting more conservative. Burton came here to the Al Hazar Mosque to study Islam and to perfect his character. He was preparing to go on a pilgrimage disguised as a Muslim. As a homosexual man entering this mosque, strangely I'm feeling excited by being illicit and feel as close to Burton as I ever have. Not being part of the gang gives one an opportunity to observe, to detach. Maybe that is what Burton, a Westerner of dubious sexuality, felt as he shuffled around here all those years ago. I wondered what the Imam thought. Would it be possible for a Westerner to make the Hajj today? Now the, the security system not uh, giving a permission for a non-Muslim to go to Mecca to make the pilgrimage. And what is the um, attitude uh, in Islam towards homosexuality? Yes. Excuse me, repeat the, the question. The attitude in Islam towards homosexuality. The in Islam against or the shawaz. No, shawaz is aqab. Shawaz is aqab. Yes. He said that this is forbidden in Islam uh, because even Islam between man and wife make it forbidden to uh, come your woman in her back so he cannot also make uh, another sex, homosex with another man. It's forbidden in Islam also to keep health and uh, it's not one of the beliefs of the Islam religion. Thank you very, very much. I started merely following in Richard Burton's footsteps but now, like Alice, I've fallen through the looking glass and am feeling personally affected. There's something incredibly potent about being here. All that fervor, conviction and flashing eyes. I'm an outsider strangely attracted to a culture that wants no part of me. My instinct is to leave quickly. Burton's was to go all the way. Burton now felt ready to make his greatest and most perilous journey, to do what no British man had ever attempted, to go in disguise as a Muslim on the Hajj to Mecca. Shall we go? To do so is to defile the holiest place in Islam. One false word or gesture and Burton would have been killed on the spot. Even for a genuine Muslim pilgrim in Burton's time, this was a pretty tough gig. Challenged by rough terrain, murderous bandits and scorching thirst, it would take him 11 hard months to cover the ground.
But despite the hardships, I think Burton was happiest when beginning an expedition. Man's heart bounds in his breast at the thought of measuring his puny force with nature's might and of emerging triumphant from trial. This is a trial of manliness. Perhaps like me, Burton marveled at the grace and elegance of the Arab boy on the camel ahead of him. He would never be as happy again. Having survived several attacks which killed fellow pilgrims, an exhausted Burton finally reached Mecca. It remains today a quite extraordinary feat of courage and deception. The book he wrote about his adventure would make him famous. He was a brigand. I think, in a way, you know, a ne'er do well, um, a bounder, in one sense, and loved um, pitching himself against the elements and the rest of the world. He was obviously an extraordinary character. He's lived on for 150 years. He was a great linguist, an explorer, a failure, a prodigious writer. Perhaps he's not the godfather of the sexual revolution, but he certainly managed to locate the defrost button of that vast clanking refrigerator, the British Empire. And for that, I think, um, I love him anyway. Burton had seen in the East an understanding of how sexuality is a central part of what makes us human. That is why he risked prison to bring to the West the Kama Sutra, the Arabian Nights, and the Perfume Garden opening Victorian's eyes and cementing his fame. He would have been struck by the irony that the East, so open in its sexuality in his day, now seems to have absorbed the very Victorian prudery that he so railed against. The Hajj in many ways was the climax of his life. Failed expeditions and second-rate diplomatic jobs followed. It was also to be his last disguise. In 1861, he would marry, and perhaps the rest of his life was a deeper act. And so here we are at the end of the road. I suppose this is about as close as I'm ever going to get to my man, or at least his bones. He's buried in there with his wife, Isabel, who was an obsessive Catholic, and this extraordinary tomb is really the last contradiction of his life, an Arab tent in a Catholic cemetery. Isabel, his wife, had him converted, according to some, a few hours after his death. And so the strange final irony is that he was buried in a faith that he absolutely despised. Richard's coffin is on the right, gilt, with great big lion's heads on the sides. Isabel burned a whole lot of his papers. What they said, who knows? Richard was many things to many people. Some people, he was a hero. To others, he was a scoundrel. Some are convinced he was gay. And then others are equally determined that he was not. But in the end, history is what you want it to be. What is certain is that he challenged the moral codes, the conventions, and the hypocrisy of the Victorian age. And in that sense, he's affected us all. More information on Sir Richard Burton and all the programmes in Victoria Passion Season is available at channel4.com slash history. Next week, behind the smokescreen of propriety, Dickens was a secret love rat. More coming up. But back to tonight.